Hi, this is Pastor David. Welcome to Grace for the Journey. My prayer is that you will receive an encouragement, direction, and maybe a challenge from the scriptures today. I hope that you'll be blessed. Thanks so much for joining in. Faith of our fathers. Faith of our fathers, living still, in spite of dungeon, fire, and sword. Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy whene'er we hear that glorious word. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Our fathers chained in prisons dark, were still in heart and conscience free. And blessed would be their children's fate, if they, like them, should die for thee. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our fathers, we will strive to win all nations unto thee. And through and through, and through the truth that comes from God, mankind shall then indeed be free. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our fathers, we will love both friend and foe in all our strife, and preach thee too as love knows how, by kindly words and virtuous life. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Father, today we pray that you would bless every father and every grandfather with the best of your spiritual blessings today. Let each one know that he's not alone in the task that you've given him to provide for and support those under his care. Create in each father and grandfather a deep sense of trust in you, knowing that he can count on you to help him lead and protect those that are dependent on him. Show him how effective the prayers of a godly man really are and what a difference he has made, is making, and can can make to those around him. Reward each father for his faithfulness past and present and future, assuring him that true success and satisfaction are not in the accomplishments or accolades, but in steadfast, Christ-like character. Demonstrate to each father your amazing grace and help them to see their children or grandchildren through your eyes, realizing that in your hands is the safest place they can ever be. Bring healing of past hurts or regrets and give joy and humility. And Lord, today as we look into the scriptures, we'll be reminded by your holy word of what people of faith are like. We're reminded of their joy and their trust in you and reminded of how they care for one another and reach out to help brothers and sisters. We're reminded of how your presence in the lives, in our lives, conquers doubts and fears. Lord, work strongly in us and conform our lives to the example of Jesus and all of those with a living faith. Help us to walk in your glorious light and rejoice in your saving truth. Gracious God, we recall how the sadness of the disciples was turned to joy and how their fear was turned to courage by your risen presence. Help us show your present reality to all of those around us and who dwell in fear and sadness. Help us, O God, and the people of Christ everywhere to bring comfort to those who grieve. O God, bless them with your peace and your care and your comfort. We pray today for strength for all who are ill and in recovery. We pray your blessing for all those that are in need, in need of your touch and peace and grace. Lord, hear our prayers. We ask that your spirits may touch those that we have named before you in the silence of our hearts, that your son might visit and speak a word of healing, that your nameless servants in this world might bring unto them your comfort and your grace. We thank you. We thank you, O God, for your power 
and your presence in our lives. Make us known as a people who share the power and presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, so that the glory we intend to give unto you will be given to all, and so that our joy may be complete in Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank you in his precious name. Amen. Acts 4, 23 through 31. When they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and elders had to say to them. And when they heard it, they lift up, lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit, why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples plot in vain. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. For truly in this city there were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness.
And just to remind you of the context of the passage read today from Acts chapter 4 and Acts chapter 3, and it's a continuing story, of course. Acts chapter 3, um, Peter and John were on their way to temple, and they found the lame man outside of the temple, and he called out for money. And they said, we don't have money. We don't have anything to hand you, to give you, but silver and gold we don't have. What we do have, we will give you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And Peter stretched out his hand, and that man took his hand, and he rose, and he began to walk. And imagine, if you had never walked before, what a day that would have been. He didn't go to rehab to learn to walk, but he just began to jump and shout and run as he was healed. Well, you would think that that would cause rejoicing in the neighborhood, in the whole area, but the, the priests, the captain of the temple, the Sadducees, the scripture says they were greatly annoyed. Hmm, isn't it so interesting? Someone else gets a blessing, and what is the reaction? They were greatly annoyed. They were really ticked off that this had happened. And so what did they do? They arrested Peter and John. Imagine, for healing a man on the, on the way, they're arrested. So they put, him, they put them in jail and held them overnight. They couldn't even be bothered to take care of excuse me, to take care of the charges right on the spot. They arrested them, and the next day they held a council. And what a threatening council it was as they, as they really tried to give them the dirty looks and intimidate them, and they asked the question, by what power or by what name? And of course, Peter shares with them, this is done, there is no other name under heaven whereby a man, a person, can be saved but the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was not ashamed of that name. He was proud to share that name. And he said, you want to know the name? That's the name. That's the name. It is in Jesus' name that we are here. No other name. So they threatened them. And finally, they were just ready to let them go. And they said, okay, we'll let you go. But one more thing. Don't speak this name again. And don't speak in this name. And of course, what did Peter and John, they probably exchanged a look and said, well, we can't stop. We will continue to share the name. There was no way that they could be punished because really they had done nothing wrong. And it says that because of all the people, and so truly the community was rejoicing. They'd seen what had been done and they were all praising God. Amen. That healing brought glory to God, and so the community was on excitement in a good way, except for these others, these priests and the, the captain of the temple and Sadduc the Sadducees who were annoyed. But because of the community, they said, finally, okay, we'd better let them go. And that brings us to, to where we are today in Acts chapter 4 and verse 23, and continuing on from there. So when they were released... They went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. Immediately, they went back to the community of faith. They went back to church. They went back to where their people were. They gravitated to believers. They were all lit by that same spiritual flame. They were attracted to each other. And if they possibly could be together, they wanted to be together. That's where they went. They had that love for the Lord, and they loved those who loved the Lord. And it was a natural thing for them to come together. It was a heavenly family, and is a heavenly family. The kingdom of God, the family of God. It's not just a trite song, but truly, it is the family of God when we come together. And that's why it is so precious. And even with our, even with our masks, in whatever way we have to come together, still, it is wonderful because we see each other and we do hear our voices as we gather together and it is right and proper. So here they were out of jail and immediately they go to where the believers were and they reported everything. They reported about that lame man and it was not about they had healed, but that lame man that the Lord himself had healed. They reported it all. They reported how the, the priests and elders had, had arrested them, put them in jail for the night, and how they'd threatened them. Don't speak this name again. And they spoke of the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So they shared the whole thing. But what's not recorded here is a complaint. 
They didn't come back with a, uh, with a, a report of, oh, it was tough, what a terrible week we've had. But they came and they spoke about the glory of God, what God had done in their midst, what God had done through them, and how this lame man was changed physically and he was changed spiritually. And what is the reaction of the crowd? So they get together and then they don't strike a committee to figure out how they can fight against the, the priests and the Sadducees. But what does it say in verse 24? It says, when they heard this, they lifted their voices together. Hallelujah. That was their response. They lifted their voices together in prayer. And today, that's what we're talking about, Pentecostal power and the power of prayer. Pentecostal power, the power of prayer, they lifted their voices to God. They knew the secret of their strength and the secret of their consolation was going to be in that power of prayer. It was natural, it was spontaneous, and it was because it was their habit, that's what they did. That's how they responded to things. Immediately, they began to pray and that day was no difference. When they heard it, they lifted their voices to God. They didn't shake their voice or shake their hands at the, at the authorities, but they lifted their voices to God in prayer. They banded together in prayer. And the prayer begins in verse 24, halfway through. And they said, Sovereign Lord, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and earth and the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of our father, David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit, they begin there in that believing prayer. We so often begin our Father. How right and proper, acknowledging who God is. And here they began to pray their believing prayer, Sovereign Lord, you are God. And you know, there is no mystery. We know that you know and we trust you. We trust you. Knowing your power, you are the one who created the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in them. Everything. All of it is from your hand. Sovereign Lord, we trust you. You are in charge. Is it easy to just leave it all to God all the time? Sometimes it's not. It becomes difficult, for sure it's difficult. And of course we want to respond and we use our own strengths and gifts and, and talents and resources trying to solve the problems, but we need to be like these people. Immediately they went to God in prayer and accepted, Sovereign Lord, you are the one, you are God. They spoke to God because they knew God, they trusted him, they had confidence and they surrendered themselves they surrendered their whole situation to God. It was not a ritual. It was not just a prayer that was said, but it was prayer that came from the heart. Sovereign God, sovereign God, you know. We know how powerful you are because we see the heavens. We see the earth and we see the sea. And we know there are those many creatures that we won't even see, but we know you created every one. Did you hear about a man in the last week or so who was swallowed by the whale. And I wondered that Jonah wasn't mentioned in the news or anything, but here was a man who was fishing for lobster. And suddenly he said the whole world went dark and he was going into the belly of the whale. And they say it's impossible, it could never happen, but this man has the testimony of what happened. And if God wants to create a whale, a great fish to swallow Jonah or to swallow someone else, he can do it. Everything in the sea, the lobster and the whale, all created by the sovereign Lord. So they come to him, again, not as a ritual, but as a relationship, and they have the ear of God. Sovereign Lord, you are great. You're the one who made all, and it is you we come to in our prayer. Their voices were together. So it's believing prayer, but it's also united prayer. And that's why it is good that we, we add our amen that we have prayed together. And one may sometimes in a, a meeting like this and in a prayer meeting may represent us to pray, but we add our amen. They all joined together. They lifted their voices together to God and they prayed. United prayer. 
So again, it's not just something that we, that we do, but we pray together, lifting our voices to God, lifting our voices in one accord. Jesus said in Matthew 18 and verse 19, if two or three or two of you agree on earth, I will do it. If two or three are gathered, united, believing in my name, then I'm there in your midst. That's powerful. So we agree in prayer and we come together as the people of God. And Jesus said, I will be there by my spirit. Believing prayer, believing in God and trusting him and uniting prayer or united prayer where we come together in prayer. We share. And then we see that it was a scriptural prayer as they begin to share what David had said from Psalm 2. David, your servant, by the Holy Spirit said, Why do the Gentiles rage and the peoples plot in vain? It is good when we know scripture and we infuse our prayer with scripture. And it's not so much about reminding God of what he said, but reminding ourselves of what God has said through his holy word. Colossians 3 and verses 15 and 16, the peace of Christ, may the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. And then he goes on to say, and let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, the word of Christ in you and the word of Christ in your prayer as you pray to the Father, believing, united, and scriptural. As David said, why do the Gentiles rage, the people's plot in vain? And we had just seen this, and they had just seen this in the crucifixion. The Gentiles and the people had raged. The Romans and the Jews, the Pilate and the council, Roman soldiers, they had raged against the Lord. They had raised up a noise, a commotion. They'd scorned him and scoffed him. David had said, why do the people rage? Why do they scorn? We see the fulfillment of what David had said. The kings of earth set themselves and the rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. And truly, that's exactly what they had seen as the nations had raised the, the peoples, the Gentiles and the Jews, the kings, Herod, Pilate, representing Caesar. They had raged against the Savior. The rulers were gathered together, the Jewish rulers, Annas, Caiaphas, the Sanhedrin. They all stood and shouted to oppose Christ. So this was part of their prayer, that Lord, we know you. We trust you, sovereign Lord, creator of all, and you have spoken to us through the prophets. And so, as much as it was so painful to witness all, we'd, all that we saw, but we see that you'd prophesied, you prepared us for this in your word. They plotted against the anointed. They'd come against the anointed, but we see this in your word. Verse 27. For truly in this city there were gathered together against your holy servants, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel. So the Jews and the Gentiles, again, leaders and the common people, they had conspired and they'd gathered together against the Lord Jesus. In this city, in Jerusalem, the city of God, in the holy city, they have conspired against. But to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. Their wickedness was used by God for good. God's plan of redemption and salvation was brought to the world through the Lord Jesus Christ and his brutal execution, his brutal crucifixion. So they say, now, Lord, we recognize all of that. So we've come to you believing, knowing who you are. We've come united, one voice, bringing our prayer to you. And we've come reminding ourselves of the scripture, recognizing that you'd spoken to us through your servant David. And then they get specific in verse 29. And now, Lord, now, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with boldness. I, every time I look at this passage, I get amazed. Because if it was you and if it was me gathered for prayer, how would we pray? 
Lord, they're evil men. They're evildoers, and Lord, we're looking for you to crush them. Get them, O oh God. Destroy them. Stop them in their tracks. Amen? <laughs> That's where we would go. That's a natural thing to do. But what do they do? Instead of cursing their enemies and saying, God, get them, those horrible, nasty people, what do they say? Now we have seen, we have heard, we look on their threats. And what do we ask, O oh God? We ask that you would give us boldness, boldness to continue to speak your word. Hallelujah. What grace, what confidence there. They're so specific. So instead of bringing, uh, bringing a judgment on, on someone else, they said, Lord, we're not here to get even, but Lord, we want boldness to speak your word. Boldness to share the word of God. We want confidence that we won't be intimidated. That we won't shy away from our responsibility to share your word just because they are how they, how they are. Even though they threaten us, but God give us boldness to share that word. They put that need to God that we need you now. We need you now to help us to give us strength. And again, for that boldness to speak your word, that anointing to share. Help us not to be intimidated. Don't let them silence us with their threats. Give us boldness, give us courage, help us to be faithful. And then they continue on in their prayer in verse 30. And while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Again, they don't pray, Lord, withhold your hand, take away the blessings, but instead they pray for a blessing. Stretch out your hand and bring healing. Stretch out your hand and show signs and wonders, all to give glory to the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything they wanted was not for their own power, not for their own reputation, not for their own purposes, but all of it. All of it was to bring honor and glory to the Lord Jesus. They're very specific again. Lord, give us boldness. For what? To speak your word. Not to stand up to, in front of them and not to shout at them, but boldness to speak your word. And Lord, we know that when your word is shared, when your word is shared in boldness and in truth, then what, is, what are you going to do, Lord? You're going to stretch out your hand to heal, to show signs and wonders that will be done in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's specific in their prayer and Christ honoring in their prayer. Christ honoring in their lives and in their prayer, and that is their whole prayer that Christ would be honored. And again, it was not about getting a big name, but it was that Jesus would get the credit that people would be drawn to him through healing and signs and wonders. It was not about church growth. It was not about the apostles, but it was about the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were not self-seeking, but they were seeking the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we get to verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered was shaken. Hallelujah. Are you ready for a shaking? But are we ready? What would be our reaction if the place that we are in where the place, the place we are praying, if it was shaken, what would our reaction be? Would we think again, is it a backhoe? Has someone just driven a big truck there? Is it an extra big train that's going by and it's shaking the building all the way up here? What would be our reaction? Would we be afraid? Would we run? Or would we say, amen? <laughs> yes, Lord. The place where they were was shaken, and that was the first sign of their answered prayer. They would prayed believing, they were united, they were scriptural, they were specific. They honored Christ in their prayer, and the Lord showed part of that answer, the place they were was shaken. How many of you can believe for a shaking? How many are afraid of the shaking? Maybe we are, but we should be ready for that shaking if it's God. We don't want antics for antics sake, we want, if God is going to do it, to shake us. 
And maybe that shaking comes in another way. Maybe the shaking is not the building shaking and the, and the, the light swaying in the, from the ceiling. But God shakes us as he answers that prayer. Sometimes he shakes us to get our attention. Sometimes he shakes us to let us know that just what you prayed, sovereign Lord, is what you need to put in action. When you call me sovereign Lord, you need to trust me to do what you've, called, what you've asked me to do. You call on my name, but then you don't trust me. You go your own way. So sometimes we do need a shaking. Get ready for the shaking. Don't be surprised when the building shakes. And don't go later onto the media, onto websites to find out about the seismic shaking that happened in town. Maybe it was God. Can we believe for that? Amen. And we should, we should expect. And it may happen, it may not happen. But what we, de what we saw here is the place they were gathered was shaken and it was about that answered prayer. And immediately it says they, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They'd just come through Pentecost and everyone speaking in, in tongues that they, and languages that they hadn't learned. The sound of wind and they saw fire, that was a shaking. That place was jumping exciting as the power of the Holy Spirit filled not just the room but filled each one of them and again they're filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to be filled with the Spirit and daily we need to be filled with the Spirit. It's not something sometime long ago, yes I was filled with the Spirit and we write it down in the back of our Bible or put a note somewhere that was the day because here they had gone through Pentecost and they were filled with the Spirit. And here they come to prayer meeting and they're filled with the Spirit. It needs to be that constant dependence on God, dependence on His Holy Spirit, that we have that anointing from Him of His Spirit. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't need to be an ecstatic experience, but that confidence in God's Word that I'll fill you with my Spirit. That same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. And so sometimes there's a shaking to get that spirit activated. Not that the spirit is not ready, but sometimes we're not ready for the Holy Spirit to be working in us and through us. But their prayer was answered. They were shaken and they were filled. And then they continued, still in verse 31, they continued to speak the word of God with boldness. That was their prayer. That was their request. God, give us that confidence. Give us that strength to preach your word, to share your word with boldness. And it said that that prayer was answered. They continued. They continued to speak his word. They continued to testify. They continued to share the word of God. Not opinions, but they shared the word of God for his glory. Jeremiah 23 and verse 28 says, Let him who has my word... Speak my word faithfully. Be faithful in sharing the word of God. You have it in your heart. Ask God just like these disciples, just like this early church, be specific and say, God, give me boldness to speak your word. Remind him who he is and remind yourself who he is. Sovereign Lord, give me that boldness to share your word, to be faithful. And they did it. They got it. They were shaken, they were filled, and they continued to testify, continued to share his word, and they didn't do it timidly. It says that they spoke it with boldness. Not in arrogance, but with boldness in confidence that this is God's word. It is true, and it needs to be shared, and they shared it. Let him who has my word speak it faithfully. And again in Jeremiah it says, it is like fire. It's like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. It breaks the stony ground. It accomplishes what it's been sent to do. Speak the word in boldness. Don't use it as a hammer to destroy someone. Don't use it as a fire to, to burn. But speak it in boldness and God will do the breaking. God will do the burning. God will do his work by his Holy Spirit. Pentecostal power, the power of prayer. Don't be afraid of it, but be expectant. 
Go into prayer believing sovereign God. We trust you. You're the one who put these beautiful mountains and this beautiful lake on this earth. You are the creator of heaven and earth and all that dwells here and all that dwells in the sea and the bottom of the lakes. Lord, that's who you are. Come to him believing. And as we gather and even as we gather in our homes, as we get prayer requests by email, by phone, let's be united. Let's join our hearts. Let's join our voices in that united prayer. And let's be scriptural, reminding ourselves that, yes, Lord, I know your word and I trust your word. And let's be specific, specific of what the need is, honoring Christ. That it's not about me that, oh, I prayed at a certain time and, and something happened. But look what God has done. We, his church, we, his people, we joined our voices together and Christ was honored in answered prayer. Get ready for the shaking. Get ready for the shaking. Get ready for the filling. And get ready for the testifying and the boldness. Amen. Be bold. Be strong. The Lord, your God, is with you. And he is mighty. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you again for these apostles and we thank you for the record we have in the, in the book of Acts to tell us, O oh God, how you worked in them and how you worked through them and help us to be that people walking in Pentecostal power, really knowing and understanding the power of prayer. Help us, O oh God, to trust you more and more. Help us, O oh God, to be united in our prayer. Lord, to be scriptural in our prayer to honor Christ in our prayer and the results of those prayers. And Lord, we expect those answers just like it was on that day so long ago, a shaking, a filling, and Lord, a boldness, your anointing in our lives to fulfill your word, to fulfill your promises, and to fulfill your call in us. We thank you. Help us also to have that same boldness and grace and care to share your word. And Lord, we leave those results to you knowing that you do all well and you'll work by your Holy Spirit. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you go from here, remember this. Because of the work of the Holy Spirit within us, we are his sons and his daughters. We've been adopted into his family. God is truly our father and we are God's children. We are his heirs and fellow heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? So go in peace and confidence, knowing that the love of God our Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit goes with us. Amen. Amen. God bless you each one as you serve him this week. And send me an email, give me a call, and let me know about the shaking and let me know about the boldness and how God is answering prayer in you and through you. Amen. Thanks so much for listening today. If you have a question or a prayer request, please email me. Let's be in touch. My prayer for you today is that God would bless you and give you grace for the journey.